Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is going to be your sixth lesson of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. So, in the previous lesson we looked at our bundle and all the materials that come with it. As we progress in this series, it's my job to provide you with fundamental theories about the work so that you can deepen your understanding of what you're doing. So therefore, in this lesson, I'm going to show you the purpose of weave, what it is, what it does, and why it's important. Now, anytime we're talking about weave, we are also talking about the warp and the weft. Warp and the weft of the fabric are at least connected to four important factors within tailoring. The first one is going to be striking out. We are laying our patterns on the fabric, therefore on the warp and the weft. Then we have ironwork. Anytime you stretch something out or you compress it, you are manipulating the warp and the weft. We have construction lines as the third one. And anytime you're drafting a pattern and you have your construction lines on the chest, the hip or whatsoever, these construction lines represent either the stripe or the check of the fabric. And then last but not least, we have pattern drafting systems. And I can say um, that most modern day pattern drafting systems are based on the warp and the weft, the horizontal and the vertical axis of the human body and the fabric. So first, I'm going to talk about the warp and the weft. After that, we'll take a closer look at the bias grain. And last but not least, we'll see how the different grains are applied on the body. If you're coming back to this video or you want to skip ahead, please make sure that you use the chapters of the video. And if you're ready to go, well then, let's go! All conventional weave is basically an arrangement of vertical and horizontal yarns. The vertical yarns are called the warp. The horizontal yarns are called the weft. The name already says it, it's woven into the warp. Now the warp is also known as the length grain, or it's also called the vertical weave. The weft is known as the cross grain, also known as the horizontal weave. Now both of these weaves or grains are straight grains. So if anyone says cut this on the straight grain, you have to ask, do you mean the length grain or the cross grain? Now, if we color our vertical yarns, like so, we get a striped fabric with vertical stripes. These yarns are also parallel to the selvage, so that's going to be the longest stripe on our fabric. However, if we only color the horizontal yarns, then we get a horizontal stripe. These stripes are perpendicular, so square to the selvage. And of course, a combination of both creates a checked fabric. Now, the length grain or the warp is the strongest yarn. The reason for that is that when the fabric is woven, there is a lot of tension on those yarns and the weft is then pulled and pushed through those warps. The weft is always more flexible, which is quite convenient because any garment that you're wearing is very likely to have the weft around your body and the warp is just hanging. So if I move my arms forwards, I'm putting tension on the horizontal part of my garment, which is the weft. Then we have the bias and the bias cuts diagonally at a 45 degrees through the warp and the weft. Now this is not a yarn or a specific grain on its own, it's just a direction. So anytime you pull anything on the bias, you are holding with one hand, one end of a yarn at the top part of that fabric, and with your other hand, you're holding the other end of another yarn at the lower part of the fabric. Obviously, if you pull, because you're not pulling the same yarn, therefore don't get the resistance of that yarn, you will stretch the fabric. Now, this is how it looks on a real fabric. So if we look at this square fabric, here we have the horizontal weave and here we have the vertical weave. If I would take the top ends of our fabric and I pull, I'm directly pulling at both ends of the same horizontal weave. 
the same weft. There is some stretch, but it's fairly stable. If I pull, if I turn this around and pull directly again from both ends of the same horizontal or vertical weave, there is maybe a little bit of stretch, but it's very stable. Why? Because I'm pulling at both ends of the same yarn. But when I'm pulling in the bias direction, I'm holding one end of a set of yarns in the horizontal direction and the other end of another set of horizontal yarns in another direction at the bottom. So none of the yarns in this point are connected to any of the yarns in this point. So then when I pull apart these two points, you'll see this flexible effect. There is no stability in this part of the fabric, which is actually a good thing because it allows us to manipulate our fabric in multiple ways. So this is the most flexible direction of our fabric. It compresses and stretches the easiest compared to all other directions that we have either vertically or horizontally. Now, the majority of garments if this is a mannequin, let's say, have the weft of the fabric wrapped around the body. So that means that our horizontal stripes are in this direction. And the warp usually hangs along the length of the body. This means that the strongest yarn is along the length. So when you bend forwards, this length part of the garment doesn't stretch out as easily. But when you move your arms forwards, as I mentioned earlier, you have the weft, which is slightly more flexible, kind of like helping you along with some of the movement. Some garments are cut completely on the bias, which means that along the horizontal and vertical axis, you have maximum flexibility. They usually are heavier when the weight of the fabric is hanging. They stretch out and uh, over time, after a few wears, they kind of like lose face. So, and it's also very expensive to cut things on the bias. Now, besides the body itself, the warp and the weft have influenced our pattern cutting systems in a variety of ways. I'm going to talk to you about that in our next lesson, so make sure to check it out. Now, let's do a summary. The warp is the longest and the strongest yarn. It runs parallel to the selvage of the fabric. The weft, on the other hand, is a slightly shorter yarn and is woven into the warp. It is the more flexible yarn of the two. It runs perpendicular to the selvage of the fabric. Now the bias direction, or the bias grain, is not a yarn on its own. It's just a direction that cuts at a 45 degree angle through the warp and the weft, and it's also the most flexible direction. The reason why it's the most flexible is that when you're pulling in the bias direction, you're not pulling the same yarn at both ends. You're pulling two different yarns at two opposite ends. So if you've ever made anything on the bias and you think it's worthy of sharing, please do so on the community page of our website because I think that it will inspire other people to perhaps do the same thing. If you like our content so far and you'd like to see us produce quality content for the entire world, please help us with your donations on the donations page of our website. If you go there, you can find all the instructions and exactly see how we use the money. Thank you very much. My name is Reza and this was today's lesson and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. It's just a direct, 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 direction. Let's do a summary. Thank <music> you.